Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to begin the service for Mr. Norman H. Tobin. We welcome those of you who are joining us online. Rabbi Nancy Landsman from Congregation Ahavat Olam will be officiating. The interment was, was held earlier this afternoon. We also did the ceremony of Kriya earlier before the service. As a reminder, I'd like to ask everyone to please be sure that your cellular phones have been turned off not to disturb the sacred ceremony. This time, Rabbi Nancy Lansman will begin the service. So and 21. I will lift up mine eyes unto the mountains. From whence shall my help come? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I want to thank all of you who are here today to lend your love and your support to Lisa and Mark to Abby, Lexi, and Hannah, to Dan and Isaac, and the whole family. It means so much that you're here, whether physically or remotely, to lend your love and your support during this difficult time. I did not have the privilege to know Norm. I am so grateful to his family taking the time to share so many beautiful wonderful memories. We come to this sacred place drawn by the eternal ties that bind your souls to the soul of your beloved Norman. Ronique Modea wrote, life is a theater, so invite your audiences carefully. Not everyone is holy enough and healthy enough to have a front row seat in our lives. There are some people in your life that need to be loved from a distance. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you let go or at least minimize your time with draining negative, incompatible, not going anywhere relationships, friendships, fellowships, and family. Everyone can't be in your front row. Observe the relationships around you. Pay attention to which ones lift and which ones lean, which ones encourage and which ones discourage, which ones are on a path of growth uphill and which ones are just going downhill. When you leave certain people, do you feel better or feel worse? Which ones always have drama or don't really understand, know, and appreciate you and the gift that lies within you? Everyone can't be in your front row. The more you seek God and the things of God, the more you seek quality, the more you seek not just the hand of God, but the face of God, the more you seek things honorable, the more you seek growth, peace of mind, love, and truth around you, the easier it will be to be become for you to decide who gets to sit in the front row and who should be moved to the balcony of your life. 
Everyone can't be in your front row. You cannot change the people around you, but you can change the people you are around. Ask God for wisdom and discernment and choose wisely the people who sit in the front row of your life. Remember that front row seats are for special and deserving people. And those who sit in your front row should be chosen carefully. Everyone can't be in your front row. So this reading started off with life is a theater. So invite your audiences carefully. From what I learned about Norm, people were just gravitated to him. Everybody liked him. I would imagine that so many people felt like they sat in Norm's front row. They were lucky enough to be that chosen person as he cared about so many of you and helped bring so much joy to so many. What a blessing he was to everyone who knew him. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, what is success? To laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a loved child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. I think we can all agree that Norm succeeded big time. And that's what makes today so difficult. And we look for comfort. And we often find that when we turn to the book of Psalms. In your service folders, you find the 23rd Psalm, a psalm that I think speaks to all of us regardless of our faith. And so I'd like to invite all of you here, as well as those of you joining us remotely, to join with me in reciting the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The author of the following is unknown. One of the greatest gifts that life can give to anyone is the very special love that families share. As years go by, it's good to know that there will always be certain people in our lives who care. For there are countless things that only families have in common and memories that no one else can make. And these precious ties that bind a family together are bonds that time and distance cannot break. How fortunate we are when we have relatives to love us. It makes the world a happy place to be. 
Few gifts in life will last as long or touch the heart as deeply as the very special gift of family. It is my honor to invite Norm's nephew, Dan, to come forward and offer some words. I'm uh, Dan, the youngest son of Arnold, Norm's oldest brother, who I uh, had an episode this morning and is in the hospital. We hope he will be okay. Uh, he's 94, and uh, it's been a hard year for him losing his two younger brothers, Shelly, about a year ago, and, and Norm. Um, I've got, so I found out this morning that I would be taking his place speaking here today. So I'm representing my father uh, and my three older brothers who have been texting me on the plane ride uh, here. So I've got all kinds of notes of things they, they'd like to convey about Norm. Norm was a great favorite of ours. And uh, one of the things about Norm is to a lot of people, including our relatives growing up, we were the four Tobin boys, kind of just a blob of boys. And Norm knew us as individuals and uh, always said something very personal and heartfelt. Um, I'll start with notes. Forgive me, I've got notes on my phone. I've got pieces of paper uh, and I've also got Parkinson's. So I'm, my hands are shaking and I'm juggling a lot, but I will get through this. Um, as long as the battery doesn't die. Uh, Joe, uh, wrote, I'm so sorry I can't be with you all today and especially with Lisa. I'm guessing most people here, including Lisa, have memories of Norm only as an ad adult. So I'll share how I remember Norm when he was young. These memories may not be accurate. Perhaps Nancy Reinberg can confirm or correct these memories, impressions, which are a little boy's memory of his favorite uncle. When I was five, Norm was 18. Compared to his brothers, my dad, Arnie, and Uncle Shelley, Norm, the youngest of three, was much, much, well, cooler. I remember Norm showing me the radio he was building from scratch. He gave me his electric set, elect, erector set. He played guitar, he wore jeans, and had a slicked back, wavy ducktail. I don't know if we have any pictures of Norm sporting that look. My overall impression of teenage Norm was of a kind of Elvis Presley. That is, if Elvis had been five foot five and Jewish. Uh, as the youngest of four, I had a special relationship with Norm, the youngest of three, and we were both in competition throughout our lives with our older brothers. Um, and we've ha had big shoes to fill and big shoes to compete with. Norm's brothers, Arnold and Shelley were both doctors, a psychoanalyst and a college professor. Uh, but Norm distinguished himself in so many ways. Um, flying into O'Hare, I regretted that I didn't fly United and get to see some of Norm's incredible light work. He spent years working at O'Hare on that light tunnel of light, time to the music. Um, when Norm would come and do electrical work at our house, I hung out with him and tried to learn something about electricity, uh, but listened to his stories. He was a great storyteller. Um, one year at a Thanksgiving event, he knew that I played the guitar and he spent a couple of hours teaching me this classical Spanish guitar song. He was tremendously patient um, and it impressed a lot of girls in high school that I could play more than Bob Dylan. Um, but Norm was a great actor. Uh, 
we've been sending messages to Lisa about how much we love Norm. And Lisa said, Norm loved all of you, but his real favorite was your mom, uh, my mother Eunice. And Norm bonded over theater. Uh, and Uni loved to take us to see Norm's plays. We saw him, I think, twice in A View from the Bridge and in, was it Steam Bath or Steam Room? And it was great. Um, and uh, Joe was commenting on Norm's acting, even when he was playing a part and another character, he was always so authentic and so genuine. And that was true to his personality. Let me see what else I have here. And the thing about Norm, I understand he did a lot of, besides being an actor, he did a lot of light work on theaters and he was very intellectual about his plays. He would talk with me for a long time about the real meaning of the play. He wasn't just playing a part. He had had extended conversations with David Mamet and arguments, I think, with David Mamet. And he uh, was a scholar of acting. Um, and it made us proud to have to see Norm on, on the stage. Vlad, uh talked about Norm and said, described him as loving, funny, honest, intense, always emotionally present. Um, and he, he really connected with everybody. And that's why people were so drawn to Norm. Um, all right, now I've got a tough assignment to le read uh, a note, a memory and a tribute from Lisa. Daddy-o, daddy -o. Ralph Joseph Tobin to Norman Howard Tobin is still a mystery as to what made your parents change your name, although it was definitely a good decision. The day has come I was truly dreading. I'm officially an orphan. What a ride we'd been on together when Stephen Tobes, my favorite brother, passed away. The pain you and mom endured was pain nobody is supposed to experience. Our lives would never be the same. Getting used to the new family dynamics was a struggle for the three of us. Then together we experienced the pain of losing Mama Tobes, the Mahjong queen. Watching how cancer can destroy, take over your body, and cause the physical pain she went through wasn't easy. Somehow we just did it together. There wasn't a choice. You always made the best of everything. All the unknowns from Brookdale to Belmont, you went with the flow. Before you even moved in at Belmont, you already earned a unique title, governor of Belmont. Realistically, nothing is the same as living your own home. I could go on and on, but I've run out of fuel. I know you understand that. Thank you for being the best dad in Poppy. You are loved by everyone. I know how much you loved me and appreciated everything I did for you and more. One of Norm's great talents was like Nancy as a father. And you can see in Lisa and her wonderful daughters, what a wonderful mother she's been. And that is the legacy of Norm and Nancy. And they just exuded love. Um, and uh, I'm glad I was able to be here today and, and mostly to, to know Norm. Uh, he was a, a special guy. Well, Dan, our hearts go out to your dad. Hope he has a speedy recovery and keep him in our prayers. Such beautiful words that you shared and memories. And just to add to, to your words, 
Um, the family shared with me that Norm was truly a loving son to Phil and Rose. And for 59 years, he and Nancy drank from the cup of life. And they, I asked, well, how did they meet? Well, they both happened to be bowling. They both enjoyed bowling. And um, they were introduced at the bowling alley while they were bowling. And, you know, when you know, you know. And for them, it was a wonderful 59 years. And they were so blessed with children, with Lisa and Stephen of blessed memory, son-in-law, Mark. Norm and Nancy were very proud and devoted grandparents to Abby, to Lexi and Hannah. They attended all of your games, your events, your programs, graduations, loved watching videos of you guys. And he was such a proud poppy. He'd brag about his grandchildren all the time. And Norm, your, your poppy would do anything for you, including buying you a new car so that you'd be safe getting to and from work or wherever you needed to go. He would do anything for you. I understand as a, as a child, a young child, he was, he was a little bit of a troublemaker. And I think, you know, he was picked on, I understand. I also learned that he didn't get his hair cut until he was about the age of six. Apparently his mom, after having two boys, really wanted a girl. And he didn't, clearly, she didn't get the girl. Um, but just so, so. He was a great kid, though. He grew up and he became this wonderful, wonderful man. He had memories of fishing with his father in Minnesota. He had a great career as a successful electrician for over 30 years. But as we all know, his true passion was theater. I understand that Yes, he was a big talker, and he made friends everywhere he went. He always had a new BFF, but he was truly, genuinely interested in what people had to say and share with him. He didn't want to talk about himself. He wanted to listen. So, yeah, he was a big talker, but he was apparently a really good listener. People would often come to Norm for advice. He was like a free therapist. Even strangers would share intimate details with him because apparently it was just so easy and comfortable to talk with Norm. He was not only adored by human beings, but also dogs, especially Milo and Cosmo. They were obsessed with him, They'd sit on his lap, and they loved him so much. Norm had this great sense of humor, and he had the ability to even laugh at himself. He knew his memory wasn't what it used to be, and he knew he kept asking you the same questions over and over, but he'd laugh at it. You'd, you'd laugh together. I understand that Norm was technically disadvantaged. And he'd go to you, Mark, for anything technical. And you were so patient with him. Why? Even though it would drive you a little crazy because you knew it wasn't anything wrong with the device. It was merely, really more Norm that caused the situation. But he, he tried. He really did his best. He was willing to learn. He had good intention. And about five years ago, he decided he wanted to learn how to play the trumpet. Who does this at this stage in their life? Well, he went out and bought a trumpet and taught himself how to play the trumpet. How cool is that? Norm was truly one of a kind. He never ran out of things to talk about with you. And above everything, he loved his family. His family recalled the Sunday family dinners 
the family cruise, all the good times and all the laughs. Remember how Norm loved to eat his favorite sandwich at Panera Bread and that he didn't care if his clothes matched or not. He knew he was colorblind. He had a big heart and he wanted only the best for his family. We know that none of us are going to live physically forever. But many of us believe in the Jewish faith that our spirit, our soul, can live on. Lador Vador, from generation to generation. And the way that that can happen is by those of us who are still here, continue to talk about him, to share the stories and the memories and document them in a variety of ways. Technology is always changing. I don't know that a piece of paper is going to go out of style anytime in our lifetime. I could be wrong. But find a variety of ways to document your wonderful memories along with these beautiful, precious photos. And that way, his memory will live on the door of door from generation to generation. Zecher Tzadik Livracha, the memory of the righteous is forever a blessing. And to that we say, Amen. The author of the following is unknown. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. It's filled with moments sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared, and laughter through the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure a living, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. I invite you to turn to your service folder for our concluding prayers. First, the El Male Rachamim, and then the Mourner's Kaddish, which you find on the back cover. If you are able to rise for these prayers, please rise.
וינוח בשלום על משכבו. O oh God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence among the holy and pure, whose shine is the brightness of the firmament unto the soul of Norman H. Tobin, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring him under the cover of thy wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life, be God's possession, and may his repose be peace. Amen. The concluding prayer on the back cover is the mourner's Kaddish. It is said that the angels brought this prayer down from heaven. It possesses wonderful power. Truly, if there is any bond strong enough to link heaven to earth, it is this prayer. So let us join together in exalting God's name with these traditional words of Kaddish Yatom, the mourner's Kaddish. Yit Kadal v'yit Kadash Shemed Rapa b'alma divrach hirute v'yamlich malchute. בחייכון וביומכון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל, בעגלה ובזמן קרי ואימרו, אמן. יהי שמי רבה מברך לעולם ולעומי עמיה, יתברך וישתבח, ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא, ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתהלל, שמי דקודשה בריחו. לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, דאמירן באלמה ואימרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואימרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום. עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואימרו אמן. May the author of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort all the bereaved among us. And to that we say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned before, the interment was held earlier this afternoon. <laughs> the family is going to immediately return to the residence at 451 Castlewood Lane in Buffalo Grove uh, till 8 p.m. Please note the information about the Shiva coordinator. Memorial contributions are to the Meadows, a supportive living experience for adults with disabilities. For those of you who are joining us online, the Shiva information and memorial contribution information can be found on our website. This time I ask everyone to please rise and stand in place as we escort the family from the chapel, then you may return to your cars. Okay. Let me just get some time. Thank you.